80 games and counting here with UConn. UConn women's beat writer John Alta Villa. Good to Stan, see you. Good Johnny to see you. A. I got you and uh, Scott Gray back in the green room. Man, you guys had the cigars. Star going. studded Sushi cast. Sushi was brought in. The green room. My first time in a green room. Liked it, huh? Good coffee. Very good coffee. Man, watching that Baylor game this weekend, I thought, okay, it's over. What happened? But UConn came roaring back with all these new kids. Your thoughts on the streak continuing? I love the streak. I think it's one of the greatest things that I've ever written about. Because it's history. And All you do is win, Johnny. Yeah, You're tired of winning. That's boring. what happens. If you win 80 games in a row, you win. That's, <laughs> that's part of the deal. All they do is win. <laughs> Anytime you get a chance as a journalist to write about a team that is on the precipice of history, it's a great opportunity. Now, you know, from a personal point of view, from a professional point of view, I would love to see them break UCLA's record. I don't care on any other level, but I think it's a wonderful thing. And... I was just talking to Scott in the green room before, Stan, and we're curious to see how in two weeks' time the national media, aside from our little hamlet here in the leafy Mm -hmm. suburbs of Connecticut, starts to pay attention to the story because they are chasing Coach Wooden. Absolutely. They are chasing Bill Walton and Kareem and uh, Sidney Wicks. It's a big deal, right? Right. And 88 wins in a row, no matter what you're doing, you try to flip a coin, you know, 88 times and see how many times it comes up heads. Mm -hmm. It's a tremendous accomplishment. Well, how about this? The national media is paying attention. Gino Ariana being nominated for Sports Illustrated Sportsman of the Year. That tells you that someone's paying attention. Clearly, the streak is part and parcel of him being nominated. That's a big deal. And he's going to be on HBO with Brian Gumbel in about a week and a half, too, um, on a little special detail in the program. So, I mean, he is a charismatic. There's no way to get around it. Gino is charismatic. And I think when the media meets him and hears him and listens to how he communicates, it's hard not to be uh, brought in by that and his experience. Uh, with the Olympic team will only make him a little bit more sure. of a, a, a bigger star on the stage. But You don't um, think the big star now? You don't think the folks around the country know this guy? Oh, I, I, th- I think so, but uh, it's a kind of a limited... National sure, but women's basketball, right, sure. and that's a whole other discussion. It's kind of a, it's kind of has a limited fan base. Mm-hmm. The larger fan base that isn't interested in embracing women's sports is just going to find out about him, I think, over the next month or so. And obviously, every time he's on TV, every time you see his name, it helps the University of Connecticut recruit, helps their program. And, you know, coaching the Olympic team in 2012 is also going to do a tremendous amount of uh, good for the UConn program. But, um, you know, just to get back to last night's game, or actually uh, Wednesday's game. um, Tuesday's Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And don't forget today's game against Georgia Tech. We tape, We tape, folks. Surprise, show. I, I thought, Stan, that it was one of the most interesting games. I was really looking forward to it. In all the years that I've covered Connecticut basketball, I was really looking forward to this game because everybody knew what the challenges were. Uh, Brittany Griner is a, is a four. She's the, she's the twin tower. Big kid, huh? Right, six feet eight. Connecticut's two post players, inexperienced. How are they going to deal there? You know, what, is, what are they going to come up with? What kind of battle plan are they going to deal Brittany Griner with? Mm-hmm. And... I was confident in Connecticut because of their speed, their athleticism, their defense. All of the tenants that have built this winning streak in the past are still there, Mm -hmm. but in younger players and in smaller players. Here's my thought, Johnny. You're the guy out there, but in the end of the game, right, when they were down on their feet a little bit, the history took over. Right. These kids who had never experienced some of the history all of a sudden started playing like they were part of the history because Baylor had that game. Right, they did. And somehow the UConn tradition took over through the players. Talk about that. Am I, am I wrong to surmise no, that? No, because it's like I always equate this to, to players that come and play for the Yankees. Hmm. It's something about the uniform. Right. I don't know whether they you know, absorb the tradition through their skin and into their hearts, hmm. but they do perform at a higher level. That's why when I got a lot of questions. Oh, my God, there's five freshmen. How are they going to play? They're going to play good. They're Connecticut players. UConn recruits out of a mold. They bring kids into the program because they know that they can perform, that they have the, ma- the maturity, that they have the athleticism, that they have the uh, intellectual capability to absorb the information, and they go out and play. And what happened yesterday? Samari Walker, 6'1 freshman, basically pushed Brittany Griner around the blocks. And Bria Hartley, their All-American guard, who l- looks and performs like Sue Bird, scored eight or nine points in the last six minutes. And look, they won the game. Bria Hartley, she's the next one, very clearly. The next lot, one. lot of moxie, a freshman, knocking down big shots. She's the next one in that legacy of great players, right? Oh, I'm convinced uh, she, she will be. Um, she's already a pressure player, as we saw last night. 
And of the five freshmen, you know, they're the, th the three top, Walker and Bria and Stephanie Dolce in the center, I think all have great capabilities to be the next tier. Michaela Johnson uh, is dealing with injuries. She's sort of like built like Swin Cash if she ever develops. What a great help that would be. Lauren Englund, their other guard, has a little bit more work to do. But it's a tremendous class. They've got three more great players coming in next year, including the number one player in the country, Kalena Lewis, a guard from Mater Day in, in Los Angeles. The beat continues on. Huh? Ryder's going to come in and take over from Maya. The beat goes on. So now, chemistry-wise, right. right? this team is still forming its chemistry. You still have the ghosts of Rizzotti and Lobo and all those great players out yeah, there. Yeah. How do you build that chemistry? I mean, this game obviously helps that uh, was played last week. You keep you know, mentioning that. How, we keep dating our show, but we air on Sunday. The game was on Tuesday. But that game helps to build some really great chemistry, right, as far as? Certainly builds confidence. Certainly gives them the belief that they can be in a tough situation with a young team against the number two team in the country and a 6 eight center on Excel. So how many times are they going to face that kind of challenge this year? Perhaps at Stanford on December the 30th, they'll face a team on, a, on a, a foreign court that'll be a difficult challenge. But I think they've already dealt with the biggest challenge logistically, personnel, matchup-wise, that they're going to see all season. Everyone had that game circle, right? The Baylor game, and that's sure, the one Stan. game they probably were going to be knocked well, off. Well, I don't know if they, if they worried about them knocked off. I had it circled because I saw it as the bridge game to the record. Hmm. If they got by this game, they were going to break the record because their next seven games that separate, beginning with today's game against Georgia Tech, to Madison Square Garden on the 19th of December against Ohio State, they are playing seven unranked teams, no teams in the top 25. LSU and uh, Georgia Tech are in that list, but they're not up to their par. They're Which could be dangerous, right? Which could be a bad thing yeah, for you, Yeah, they got right? LSU at Gamble. They got Georgia Tech today uh, in Atlanta, which will be their first road game um, but uh, I, I, I think uh, that in three weeks' time, two of the biggest basketball games in Connecticut history will be played on the 19th of Madison Square Garden and then to break the wooden record December 21st at XL against Florida State. Okay, so real quickly then, 15 seconds with this streak. How much is it a motivating thing for the team or is it a debilitating thing? Too much stress on everybody. I think personally in my heart that they want to break the record because who wouldn't want to be associated with that but publicly is it a burden though well it, it, it's not a burden because they don't talk about it it's not important to them i think they're all thinking about it sure. they know it's there but they don't acknowledge it they don't talk about it publicly but in 25 years you don't think gino wants to talk to his grandson about the fact that he broke john wooden's record i think he does all right we're gonna have you back you better get back to the green room i think your sushi is all gone all right. scott gray's back there when we come back we'll talk with wticam scott gray about the yukon men's basketball team featuring six freshmen wow don't that's go away a lot of that's freshmen. a lot of freshmen yes it is <laughs>